to talk more about the NSA revelations and the UK government's attempts to curb them. I'm joined live now from Bristol by investigative journalist Tony Gosling. Uh, it's always good to have you with us. What do British journalists think about Cameron's warning of legal action? Well, Tabby, I think we've got something rotten in the state of England. Um, David Cameron is threatening journalists uh, at the same time as he's calling for press freedom. And, of course, what that really means is it's press freedom for his story. He doesn't see, uh, really, I don't think he really wants independent journalism in this country. I think if he could close down The Guardian, he would. Uh, he really hates these revelations. Many people may have noticed that his former communications uh, 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 man, uh, Andy Coulson, is in court in Britain today facing these same sorts of phone hacking charges as actually is being accused the GCHQ and the NSA of. These mass data trawls are extremely dangerous and criminal acts. We've seen the security services in this country try and change the law to bring those acts within the law and fail. Uh, so, effectively, what uh, Michael Hastings, the investigative journalist in the United States, was saying is that the military and certain parts of the government, including David Cameron and the people surrounding him, have declared war on the press. And this is why he's attacking The Guardian, is because actually what, what The Guardian's doing is exposing criminality at high level. David Cameron needs to move out of the way and allow the authorities to actually arrest people who have committed these crimes. The reason why these data trawls are so dangerous is it allows uh, really the GCHQ and the authorities in Britain to take out any of their political opponents. I mean, for example, we've seen just over the weekend uh, this guy Laurie Love, who was part of the Occupy movement, arrested, and he, it looks like he may even be extradited to the United States. Tony Cameron uh, for is hacking into computers. Tony Cameron is saying that or claiming that publishing NSA leaks is damaging national security. What does it actually uh, have to? Uh, what does he actually have to back up that claim? I mean, uh, do media outlets that take national security as seriously as they should, or? Look, there's been no evidence whatsoever that any of this is any threat to national security. As The Guardian and Glenn Greenwald point out time and time again, this is really the last refuge of a scoundrel, this accusation of it threatening national security, because it's been absolutely, all it's been is an accusation. No evidence for it whatsoever. I mean, the people who have been supposed to be protecting our freedoms, uh, the security services, on 9-11, on 7-7, many people around the world believe that those were actually false flag attacks inside jobs. These people were supposed to be protecting our freedoms and they haven't. Uh, I mean, for example, in Britain, the families of many of the 7-7 victims have simply been let down by the legal process and, and left hanging. This, we're in a very dangerous state, I think, in Britain. We're moving towards a police state, almost like a Pinochet-type Britain. I mean, we haven't obviously seen dis mass disappearances and mass arrests, but the police are scared, uh, at least th those who are close to the government and the na new National Crime Agency, Britain's FBI, are ar going around arresting the wrong people. What they should be doing is arresting those who have been doing these massive illegal mm -hmm. data trawls. Uh, that's, the that's the real problem here. The White House has promised that it will review its sweeping surveillance uh, practices, but this initiative really is not welcomed by everyone in Washington. Let's just take a look at some of the reactions uh, that we've heard out of Washington there. NSA Director General Keith Alexander has uh, uh, challenged the pending review, saying he believes mass spying has been entirely justified by the security gains. That stance is also shared by several Washington hawks, with former Vice President Dick Cheney saying that 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 extra knowledge is always an advantage when it comes to security. So, Tony, I ask you, who do you think will have an upper hand here, those advocating for the review or those against it? Well, I think uh, Cameron's accusations against The Guardian will actually backfire on him in a similar way as the Daily Mail's accusations against uh, Ed Miliband's father backfired. I mean, let's look at, at, what, at what's been going on here. We've got war crimes on a massive scale, illegal invasions, drone killings, these enormous false flag attacks been going on o over the last 10 years or so, justifying this illegal war on terror, this kind of idea of regime change wherever we want. The latest attempt in Syria has failed so far, and so what's happened is much of the flack is now being poured on the journalists and, and on the people and on the politicians. As I said before, as Michael Hastings pointed out, the guy who died in a fiery car crash in Los Angeles back in June, 
that what's happening is the criminals within the system are now turning on the press and the politicians. And that's why it's so dangerous. That's why I mentioned Pinochet. And that's why we ha that's the sort of direction we have to really make sure we avoid here in Britain. We need some arrests of senior people who've been act doing criminal acts within the Secret Services. Otherwise, we are going down that police state Pinochet route. Tony Gosling, investigative journalist, live there from the UK, speaking to us on this ongoing story that we're taking a look at here on RT. Thank you very much.